this entire area before the farming agricultural came in would have all been the tall grass prairie area. In the tall grass prairie area, the riparian areas were only something that handled water in the springtime because with the tall grass prairie, there wouldn't be runoff. Nearly 100% of it would infiltrate and be absorbed. At that time, there wouldn't have been water, especially running in the summertime, unless it was coming from spring-fed aquifers that appeared, or even the lakes were, that's the way they were filled. The water cycle that was happening in those days, you have to really consider it, it's been destroyed. Now, you have to have some kind of water cycle, so now we have a new one. And the new one is that instead of everything coming to the surface from underground, uh, we have surface runoff. We have surface runoff of, of farm fields, highways, paved areas, and crop fields. The result is we have a lot of sediment that moves to the lower elevations. Gravity will pull it. Water will float it. When you can't take in water as fast as it comes, it will run off. It's been said one time that saving water and soil starts where the raindrop falls, and, and that's truly the case. So what we're looking here is trying to fix a symptom rather than what the original problem was. And the original problem, obviously, in this day of, of agriculture is not going away. So we work with the symptoms. How can we clean up this runoff that comes off these fields? We go back to the original way that water was cleaned and maintained both quality and quantity was through grasslands. To restore these areas is exactly what's needed, is, is some type of a, of a buffer area. Eleven years ago, uh, Barry Berg came up with the idea for SRAM. So that's the Seasonal Riparian Area Management Program. Basically, that program was designed to defer grazing during the summer months and then allow grazing in the wintertime after September 30th. In the summertime, when the grazing is deferred, landowners are allowed to come in and cut hay or take a crop off of the area as you can see here and once they decide if they want to hay it or, or graze it they can do so within those those time frames that we set up with the uh, management program. Now in the fall if they do decide to graze then they do have to have an alternative water source available for the livestock during grazing and an alternative water source that we have a definition for means anything other than the actual creek that runs through the pasture. Uh, the land that we're standing on right now was the, the first area that was actually enrolled in the program. So we're celebrating the 10 year anniversary of the program, as well as this producer's involvement in, in SRAM. By implementing these, these buffers and doing these programs, we're able to lower the amount of, of the pollutants, sediment, and E. coli into the stream and trying to get those, those streams and those water bodies back to where they meet those beneficial use criteria for the state and where it's safe to do those type of practices in. Also clean water in the watershed, in the basin, is better for drinking water that all these streams and aquifers that are associated with them are used for. City of Sioux Falls being the largest city in South Dakota, one of their major sources of drinking water uh, is the aquifers that are associated with Skunk Creek and the Big Sioux River. And so that water quality is a big concern. We do want to keep that water quality in check so that it doesn't get so expensive to treat it. We provide an upfront payment to incentivize this land management and that payment helps to improve water quality for everyone downstream. 
The biggest benefit comes from that economic side where you look at, uh, at haying something with all of this beautiful clover and what that would look like when you take it to market. Some of the early numbers that we've run are, um, lead that to be up to $400 per acre just on selling grass. That's a lot lower maintenance, that's a lot less hands-on involvement. Um, you're haying grass and you're getting a really nice payment off of it, um, in addition to that upfront payment that we offer just for putting it into the management program. There are wildlife benefits to having these uh, the riparian protections. Um, as we're standing around here, you can hear lots of uh, songbirds. Uh, pollinators are, are always in, in large supply when we have these buffered areas. Um, and so the other day, Barry and I were out here and we saw some bald eagles flying around. Um, and so just knowing uh, that if you're, if you're a hunter as well, there's a benefit. There's pheasant habitats that come from this. There's deer habitats that come from this. And so those wildlife benefits are an added bonus to the management plan. Um, it's not something that we set out with that direct uh, idea in mind, um, but we do, uh, we do request that that, uh, that first hay, if you are in a haying program, comes after June 15th to help promote more pheasant habitats as well. So there's a lot of great uh, wildlife habitats that are a direct result of having these riparian programs. The hope is to have an incentive for producers to recognize the importance of the grasslands in these riparian areas. If they haven't done it before, that they develop some type of a ethical obligation. I think any landowner has that obligation to at least preserve the land that they have. Generations have come before, our generations now are living off it. Generations in the future will still depend on this land. We hope in 10, 15 years of doing that, that the producer just takes it to heart and that's the management that he's been doing for a while. He's accepting it, it works for him financially, and it's feasible to do it that way and he continues on with it into the future.